Lux is an ugly, miserable orphan prince who hated the corruption of the former empire, so he decided to destroy it alone and rebuild it. However, he couldn't complete his plan, and a new empire was formed. Hiding his power as a hero, he was forced to enroll in an all-girls school. On a particular date, he accidentally falls on a girl in the girl's bath and sees her plot in 4K. He wonders how this happened again, and to ease the situation, the idiot tells her she's cute, but the girl calls him a pervert and throws him in jail. While in the cell, an ugly girl appears, and he tries to explain himself, but the girl doesn't give a shit about his story. She sees a sword device and asks if it belongs to him, to which he replies yes, and she tells him it's uncommon to see someone with two swords, especially the black one. Another girl walks in, and they soon take him to the headmaster, making him realize he is in the Royal Academy. On meeting the headmaster, she recognizes him as the prince of the former empire. He apologizes for what happened, and she tells him she will overlook it because she knows him to be a coward who doesn't know how to talk to girls. She then goes on to talk about the academy, saying it is meant for training girls who have potential as drag knights, but since there are only a few male drag knights left, she would love him to work here, shocking him. The girl whose plot he saw barges in anger and voices out her disapproval as she approaches him, but the other girls warn her not to come too close so he won't develop plot with her again. The headmaster tells her to handle the punishment as she may please, and she suddenly challenges him to a fight to decide if he is a worthy drag knight or just a dumbass. The headmaster tells her that this won't be easy as he has remained undefeated in several battles in the past, but the girl insists on a fight in which, if he loses, he will be thrown in jail as a criminal. She introduces herself as Rizushote, the princess of the new empire, shocking Lux. The next day, before the duel commences, the princess asks him if he knows the reason she challenged him to a fight, and he replies that it's because he is the prince of the old empire. However, she tells him she would tell him why if he wins the fight. Lux immediately activates his drag ride wyvern. On seeing this, the princess mocks him and says his ride can hardly compare to hers, the divine drag ride Tiamat. The battle begins and Rizu Shete starts to fire her cannons at him while he dodges them. She asks him if he can handle her, as she likes it a bit rough, and then blasts him, damaging his sword. Lux apologizes for seeing her plot earlier, but she gets angrier and summons her cannon. She tells him to get rid of his broken wyvern and use his other sword device, but he refuses to. She immediately sends her metal weapons flying at him before charging a heavy attack, but he dodges all. Lux fears for his life, and the princess, now frustrated, wonders why she can't beat him. She suddenly activates a divine skill with her sword, which sends Lux crashing to the ground with a massive earthquake. She then tries to land a final attack, but she suddenly loses control of her weapons, and they immediately hear the sound of a flute, which causes a fearful abyss to appear. Lux begins to fight the abyss, and while he does this, he asks Rizu Shete to go to the ground level and target the enemy since he cannot defeat the abyss alone. He tells her to open fire as soon as he gives the signal, However, the abyss suddenly charges at the princess, and on seeing this, Lux attempts to protect her, but loses his arm in the process. This gives an opening for Rizu Shete to unleash her fire and Isekai, the monster. Following that, the princess continues another shower plot, and she thinks about how Lux saved her, being the first time a guy tried to protect her. Meanwhile, Lux suddenly wakes up from a dream and sees Rizu Shete is here to take care of him, surprising him, but she tells him it's because he saved her. She then tells him the reason she challenged him to a duel is that she couldn't let him get away with seeing her naked. However, the little pervert apologizes and tells her she's got a nice plot, but she calls him a moron and tells him she's talking about this as she shows him a crest above her flood date. She tells him not to tell anyone about it, to which he swears he wouldn't. After that, she tells him that he will be attending the academy as a student from the next day, shocking him. The following day, Lux resumes at the academy and he is introduced to his classmates. He is told to find himself an empty seat, and as he walks across the class, he comes across this girl with mighty cannons, and immediately recognizes it's his childhood friend Filthy, so he decides to sit beside her, making Lisha jealous. During the school's break time, all the girls come to him for a hand service, and as they fight to decide who he services first, Lisha appears and makes a request that she wants him to be her exclusive assistant and caretaker, shocking everyone who wonders why she would want a guy to do that. However, she tells him it's no big deal since he's seen her plot anyway. Filthy stands up to her with her mighty cannons and tells her to back off, but Lisha won't listen, and she stupidly tries to bribe her with a donut. Cruel Lucifer suddenly appears and saves him from the mess, and on getting out, he thanks her and asks why she helped him. She asks him about the Black Hero, the unknown lone drag knight who drove the former empire to defeat, leaving him speechless, and then she tells him to look for him. Following that, he wakes from a dream where he sees himself pleading with his brother not to be Sekai too many people. He unknowingly grabs Plot, thinking it's his pillow, and as he develops more plot, 
He suddenly realizes it's Filthy's pillows and immediately jumps out of bed. He wonders why she is in his room, and she tells him they are roommates. His sister soon finds out and tells him he deserves the Oscars for his notoriety in not only sneaking into baths but now into girls' rooms. Later that afternoon, he heads to the repair shop for his wyvern and shockingly discovers that Lisha is in charge of the repairs. She tells him he will be joining the school's night squadron and hands him a sword, to which he agrees to do his best. Following that, they endlessly walk around the city and head to the top of a tower to have a view of it. Lux tells her how much of a worthy queen she is by being able to repair drag rides, but she tells him she is unworthy because the former empire held her hostage, tortured her, and branded a crest on her body. Later that night, he also thinks about how he couldn't perform as a true prince and falls into a dream where he couldn't stop his crazy brother from Issa codding everyone. The next morning, a night squadron cadets are dispatched to suppress an abyssal attack. Meanwhile, Lux is suspicious of why two abyss attacks have occurred within a short period. The cadets gather around a giant slimy substance, ready to attack. Then, an ugly dude named Velvet suddenly blows a flute that explodes the slimy substance, causing several abyss to emerge. He blows the flute again, and the abyss begin to attack with Lisha fighting back. Soon, the abyss fire their crimson weapons at her, and while she dodges them, Velvet smacks her to the ground. He reveals the crest on her belly, after which he says it was he who put the crest there. She gets angry and tries to unsheathe her sword, but it flings off her hand and cuts his face, getting him angry. But before he can land a strike, Lux appears and blocks him. He tells Lisha how he was a useless prince, but has now decided to help her become recognized as the new empire's queen. As he gives his useless speech, Velvet cuts off Wyvern's arm. However, he activates his black sword device for the first time and turns into the black hero, shocking Velvet. He then begins to wreak massive damage to the abyss before dealing the final blow using Reload on fire. Following this, the Academy throws a surprise party for him to celebrate his victory. And during the party, the headmaster tells him they've decided to hold a competition for him. She shows everyone a form and announces that whoever gets the form from Lux, within an hour, will have an exclusive right to use him the way she wants for one week. The competition begins and Lux goes to hide in the storehouse, but he soon discovers Lishit is also there, and she asks him about the black hero to distract him. While he answers her, she suddenly restrains him with her drag rod and asks for the form, so he promises to give it to her if she frees him. She listens to him, but he quickly escapes, and on getting out, he bumps into Filthy, who immediately restrains him with her giant cannons and promises to give him her rice cakes if he gives her the form, but he is an alpha male and doesn't give in. He gets to a room and discovers it's just 10 minutes left, so he quickly hides. Then, some girls come in and start removing their plot armor making Lux realize that he is in the changing room. The girls discuss among themselves that he may be peeping at them, and just when Lux thinks about his reputation already in the mud, Crew Lucifer comes close and discovers he's there. However, she keeps his secret, and later, after the other girls have left, she tells him he doesn't have to hide anymore as the time for the competition has been exceeded. She asks for the form, and he gets it to her, but he soon realizes that she has deceived him by altering the time just to get the form from him. Later that night, Lux and his sister, Airi, visit the headmaster, who shows them the flute they took from Velvet, and tells Lux to investigate it. As Lux and Airi part that night, she tells him to be careful being a boyfriend to Crew Lucifer, as she is not to be trusted. The next day, during the school's lunch, Lux sits with Crew Lucifer, as she explains his role as her boyfriend for the week. She tells him the reason she came to the new empire was because her family wanted her to find a noble suitor he had married to, and a butler would be coming in a few days to see if she's managed to get one so she wants him to pretend as her boyfriend. Following that, Crew Lucifer takes him to get some designer wear as he's always been known to dress like a brokey. And while they return later in the evening, some rogues attack them. Crew Lucifer tells Lux to handle the two idiots before him so it can give her an opening to summon her drag rod, Fafner. After summoning Fafner, she predicts the enemy's future moves and blows them up in three hits. Lux sees Lisha and Filthy and wonders how the fuck they got there. One of the two attackers from earlier quickly takes to his heels and tries to escape but is captured by Alteraz, who suddenly appears. Crew Lucifer reveals that this is the butler she was talking about, and that night, while they eat dinner, she reveals that Lux is her boyfriend. However, the butler disagrees and says that a different arrangement is already in place. An ugly lord named Barzerite of the Four Great Nobles suddenly appears and calls Crew Lucifer his future wife. However, she tells him that she's already dating a guy. So Barzerite challenges Lux to a fight to decide who wins the girl. But Crew Lucifer suggests that they do two on two instead, where she pairs with Lux while the lord pairs with the butler. Following that, Barzerite meets a strange guy in his chambers, who tells him that the key needed to access the ruins is already in his hands, ending at Crew Lucifer, and Barzerite makes an evil laugh as he realizes this. Later, the four great nobles are summoned for an urgent meeting regarding Ragnarok. 
which can awaken a powerful abyss with paranormal powers concealed in the ruins. It all reason that they have to prepare for that occurrence as the new empire isn't yet strong enough to face a Ragnarok. One of the four nobles suggests that they keep investigating the ruins in order to suppress Ragnarok, and then he asks that they let his son, Marzarad, undertake the task. Also that night, the headmaster gathers the Nike Squadron cadets and tells them about the need to investigate the ruins. She reveals the horn-shaped flute and says that this might be the key to entering the deepest parts of the ruins, and then gives it to Lux to be in charge. Meanwhile, Lux sees Crew Lucifer and wonders why she is attending the meeting even though transfer students are prohibited. He meets her, and she tells him not to treat her differently as this might be her chance to accomplish her goal, leaving Lux wondering what she means by that. The next day, just as the cadets prepare to set out for their investigation, the ugly instructor calls up Barzarad and declares that he will also be participating, shocking everyone. They set out for the mission and soon discover the ruins. On seeing this, Crew Lucifer immediately heads towards it, leaving the others behind. Suddenly, a very brutal abyss called Diabolos appears. It immediately lunges towards one of the cadets, but Lux quickly intercepts and blocks it. It almost crushes Lux, but Lisha fires her laser cannon at the abyss to save him. Then they fire their weapons at it, but it dodges all the attacks at insane speed. However, Barzarad intervenes with a powerful laser blast. Crew Lucifer soon appears and immediately lunges towards the abyss with her powerful skill, Wise Blood. But the abyss dodges all, shocking her. The abyss continues to dodge all the myriads of attack. But Barzarad suddenly summons an axe and makes a direct hit, causing Diabolos to self-destruct while emitting a very bright light. The cadets manage to protect themselves by summoning a barrier, but Crew Lucifer's Fafnir suddenly loses control as the ruins glow. Upon seeing this, Lux immediately goes to protect her, but they both get sucked into the ruins. He suddenly wakes up in a strange place and wonders where he is, and Crew Lucifer replies that they are in the ruins. She then suggests that they head to the altar at the center. As she tries to walk, she falls from exhaustion, so Lux offers to support her as they head to the altar. On getting inside, Crew Lucifer walks up to the center, and while Lux brings out the flute, thinking it's the key, the center suddenly gets activated, shocking him. Then he discovers that Crew Lucifer is the key, who then tells him that she is not a human of this world, but a survivor of the ruins. Suddenly, an earthquake occurs, and Lux immediately runs to save her, but they get stuck inside the ruins. However, Lisha soon gets her way in by drilling a hole with her drag ride, and she immediately tells Lux she wants to ride his dragon, so he can also drill a hole in her. Later that evening, he meets his sister, who asks him about what he discovered in the ruins, but he replies that he didn't find anything, trying to protect Crew Lucifer. The next day, Crew Lucifer alone meets Barzarad and Alterize for the duel, and as they prepare to start the battle, Barzarad sucks Alterize's powers and puts her to sleep. The battle begins with both lunging at each other, and after a series of heated exchanges, Barzarad realizes that Crew Lucifer's Fafter can predict future moves, so as they fight, he steals her powers without her knowing. After several attempts, she wonders why she keeps missing, even with the use of the wise blood skill. He fires at her at full throttle and knocks her to the ground with his axe. He then tells her that no one can save her from him. However, Lux suddenly throws his sword at him, but he quickly evades it. Barzarad realizes that Lux is the black hero and mocks him, telling him he has no chance. Then, Lux activates Reload on fire and dashes at him at full speed, but Barzarad blocks his attacks with his barriers. Lux reveals that Barzarad could read his moves because he had already stolen Crew Lucifer's wise blood, making her realize that this was why she could make any hit. Barzarad commends him for his sharp eyes and then fires his laser gun at him, but as Lux tries to block it, he suddenly grabs him, steals his power too, and then uses his move against him. Seeing this, Crew Lucifer asks Lux why he is fighting for her even when he has nothing to gain, but Aeru responds that he will never back out once he's made up his mind about something. Soon, Lux's drag ride starts to blink as he loses control, and Crew Lucifer tells him to stop, but he tells her he would fight on for her sake. And just when Barzarite thinks Lux can't fight again, he suddenly activates another powerful move called Recoil Burst and dashes towards him, annihilating him. Crew Lucifer is surprised, but A retells her that Lux had let Drag Ride rampage on purpose so he could unleash his true power. Lux returns to Crew Lucifer, and they return to the academy. Several weeks later, Lux disguises himself as an ugly girl and walks around the school at night. He meets an instructor who warns him about a stalker who lurking around the school. Meanwhile, he wonders why anyone hasn't noticed it's him yet. Some moments earlier, he had met Shiras, who told him about the existence of Ragnarok in the country, making him sad as he thought that he had defeated Barzarad, who could fare against the Ragnarok. Shiras then told him about a girl named Celestia, a daughter of the four great nobles, who also is powerful enough to fare against a Ragnarok. She added that she is the strongest in the academy and will soon return to the capital. 
However, there is a rumor that she despises men. After this, Cher is forced him to wear a girl's clothes so he could patrol for her that night. While he thinks about this, he wonders what kind of a person Celestia is. Then, he suddenly hears a movement in the bush and immediately stands up to check who it is, only to find a miserable, lonely girl named Celestia talking to a cat. Meanwhile, a stranger suddenly appears behind him and threatens him with a dagger. As he wonders if this is the stalker the instructor talked about, Celestia quickly comes to defend him, but the stranger immediately drops a smoke bomb and flees. However, he suddenly throws the dagger at her from a distance, but Lux quickly deflects it and gets injured in the process. She takes Lux to the infirmary and tells him to pull his plot armor so she can treat him, but not wanting to blow his cover, he tells her to do it from the back instead. The next night, a guy dressed in a cloak visits Balzerad in his cell. Imani thinks the guy is there to rescue him. He activates a process with his finger that suddenly transforms him into something mysterious. Then he summons several abyss with his flute. The next morning, while Lux reasons that he needs to speak with Sills about the need to suppress Ragnarok, he is called to the headmaster's office, where Lisha and Sills are having a heated argument about his admission into the school as the only male. Apparently, Sills, the hater of men, wants him out. He tries to tell her about Ragnarok, but she tells him not to be concerned about it as she will fight it alone. However, he refuses and tells her Ragnarok is too powerful for her to suppress it alone. The headmaster calls their attention and suggests they should have a duel in three days to settle this, and Sels accepts. That night, an ugly girl named Sania comes to encourage Sels on her quest to get rid of Lux. The following night, while Lux talks with the other girls, he is called for a massage request, and on reaching the room where his service is needed, he discovers it was Sels who requested his service, shocking him. After the massage plot, Sills plans to thank him, not knowing who it is since she's been facing away, but he quickly disguises himself as Luno, the girl she met that day. Sills turns around and is excited to see her, so she invites her for lunch the next day. Luno soon leaves and on getting out, Sania almost assaults her, but Cru Lucifer appears just in time to save her, having recognized its Lux. The next day, Lux meets Sills as Luno, and they both carefully waste each other's time. At the Imperial capital, an ugly Baldi reports they couldn't find the Ragnarok, and could only find its empty trace outside town. The night squadrons are taken to an island for a training camp, and on the day of the duel, the instructor instructs them to draw their swords and get ready to mount each other's dragons. Sills immediately activates Lindworm, while Lux activates Wyvern as they charge at each other. Meanwhile, Sheris and Tilfair cross the stupid spy as she runs around in broad daylight like an idiot. They tell the spy her cover has been blown, revealing that they know she is Sania, and she immediately unveils herself. Sania tells them it's her mission to ease Sekai everyone and destroy the new empire. So she draws her sword, and they suddenly hear the sound of the flute. The duel between Lux and Cells continues as she fires powerful lightning at him, causing a massive earthquake beneath him as he blocks it. He suddenly activates Recoil Burst and charges at her at full speed, but she quickly teleports using Divine Gate and then prepares to fire at full throttle. However, an abyss suddenly breaks out its tentacles from the ground and engulfs her, shocking everyone. They all immediately begin to evacuate the area, and Aire wonders where Filthy is. Meanwhile, Filthy is aimlessly walking through the forest feeling sick. She meets her sister, the headmaster, who comforts her and tells her she will never let them take her again. Sills thoughtlessly charges at the abyss, claiming it's her fault it's there, and she manages to deal major damage, making the abyss retreat. But the stranger in cloak immediately revives it at the sound of the flute, and on seeing him, Lux wonders if it's his brother. Senia appears and charges at Sells, but Lux quickly intercepts and blocks her. Senia, intending to turn him against her, reveals that it's Sells' fault that his grandfather died, and she fires her gun at her, crashing her to the ground. Lux meets her, and she apologizes for all that happened with his grandfather, who used to be her teacher. He deactivates Wevern and unsheathes the black sword device, and on seeing this, she notices it's the same sword she saw with Luno while she came to massage her. He apologizes for not telling her beforehand. Then, he immediately Bahamut. activates Bahamut and turns into the renowned black hero, shocking her. He promises to protect her and then charges towards the revived Ragnarok. Sania gets in his way, but he cuts off her arm in an instant, and while she tells him it's already too late to destroy the monster on his own, he activates Reload on fire and begins to slice off all its tentacles at immense speed. He immediately switches to end action and enters god mode as he wreaks massive damage to the abyss before he finally isekais it. However, as the monster crashes to the ground, its core breaks out and Sania immediately grabs it and flies off. Apparently, they were waiting for this moment. The strange guy suddenly unveils himself and Lux realizes it's not his brother. He introduces himself as Hayes and tells him that he will soon revive the nightmare from five years ago. But Lux seems not to remember. Later that night, he thinks about this and tries hard to remember, 
but to no avail then, a large fish-like structure suddenly emerges from the ocean, which the headmaster reveals to be one of the ruins. She tells them she will now declare the real purpose of the training camp. The next day, they all mount their drag rides and prepare to enter the ruins to investigate it. However, the headmaster is worried about Filthy, who doesn't seem to be feeling too well. On getting inside, they begin to score the area and investigate it, and they soon reach a point where they split up into groups so they can investigate the different floors of the ruins. Nokudo and Aeri are paired with Lux, and as they head further into the ruins, Aeri tells the renowned pervert not to touch her roommate just because no one else is around. But Nokudo sadly mentions that Lux has never considered her ugly ass as a girl. <laughs> Lux immediately tries to console her by telling her she's cute, and when she asks him what part of her is attracted to him, he describes her miniature plot. However, Nokudo is suddenly alerted of something shaped like a human ahead of them, and on checking in to find out what it is, they shockingly see a child sleeping under the rubble. On activating her, she introduces herself as Kurish, a program created to supervise the ruins. However, she can't remember many records from the past, but keeps addressing Cruel Lucifer as administrator, making her wonder why. Meanwhile, Filthy is feeling tired and terrible, so Lux approaches her and tells her to come and rest on his dragon. At the Imperial Palace, the useless four great nobles gather to discuss Velvet, who has escaped from prison and is gathering a rebel army to attack the Empire. They suggest sending the Academy students to fight against him. Back in the ruins, Lux carries Filthy around on his drag ride, and on reaching the production area where the Abyss are made, she begins to feel pain in her head as Hayes plays the flute from afar, and suddenly an abyss appears in the ruins and attacks them. Lux discovers that it's the same abyss that attacked them before, and Kureshi reveals that this ruin releases three abyss when it's in a state of alert. Upon hearing this, Lux immediately suggests to the headmaster that they suspend the investigation, but she refuses. Suddenly, Thilthi activates her drag ride and sets out to look for the abyss, surprising Lux as he quickly follows after her in his bombament. He wonders if she is fine, and upon getting to the center of the ruin, he asks her if she has been to this island before. But before she can respond, they are both suddenly transported to a strange place. An abyss immediately attacks, and Lux instantly isekais it, but he finds the place familiar as it triggers a horrible memory of the past. He looks for Filthy, and soon walks into an abandoned building that was previously used for carrying out experiments on humans in the former empire, and he remembers that he used to be here five years ago. He finds Filthy very weak, and as he tries bringing her out, she suddenly chokes him against the wall as she transforms into an abyss. However, she immediately comes back to her senses and falls to the ground. Suddenly, Hayes appears. Meanwhile, on the other part of the ruin, the others manage to annihilate the two abyss, and they find the entrance to the deepest part of the ruin, but would require a key to open the door. But Cruel Lucifer doesn't open up about her identity. Lux threatens to Isekai Hayes, but he tells him that Filthy will also die if he does, surprising Lux, and he further reveals that the seed of the Ragnarok has been planted in her. After being implanted with this seed, it eats away a human from the inside and eventually turns them into an abyss, faithful to Ragnarok's commands. However, Filthy has been trying to oppose the commands, which is the cause of her fever and constant headaches. Lux asks him what the order is, and he reveals that he had commanded the Ragnarok to isekai him, shocking him. Hayes adds that if she continues to disobey, she will suffer and will eventually die and turn to ash. He then makes an offer, asking him to open the door to the deepest part of the ruin in two days if he wants to save her. Later that night, he meets Filthy's sister, the headmaster, and she tells him that Filthy had already been isekai during the experiment, but she suddenly woke up at the time and became more powerful, which made her realize that her sister was turning into an abyss. This was why she brought the night squadrons to the ruin, so she could perhaps save Filthy with its powers. Following that, Lux goes for Bahamut's repairs and Lisha tells him about the new hidden ability she added called Overlimit. However, it's dangerous and could isekai him if he uses it without its disarming code, so Lisha heads to Headmaster to ask for permissions for its use. Lux suddenly hears from his brother, Fugil, who tells him that he needs to break Hay's flute and defeat the Ragnarok if he wants to save Filthy. Following that, Lux meets Filthy in her room, and she tells him that she already knows about the abyss in her body. She then makes a farewell speech, but he quickly stops her and tells her how her huge plot has been a motivating factor for his strength, so she must not die so he can continue being a hero. Back to the ruins, Cruel Lucifer eventually opens the door to the deepest part, and on getting inside, they wonder if they'd not made a mistake as they can't find the old documents they need. However, Kurisha regains her lost memory and suddenly goes villain mode. Ace appears with a core and filthy beside him. He blows the flute and commands her to isekai everyone. Kurishi also controls some unmanned drag rides, and an intense fight begins. The night squadrons try to fight Filthy, but she instantly overpowers them, rendering their drag rides ineffective. Meanwhile, Aerie, 
holding Velvet's flute in her hand, suddenly blows it, and it immediately overrides the effect of Hayes' flute on Filthy. Upon realizing this, Hayes quickly tries to blow his flute again, but Filthy prevents him, so he immediately uses his trump card by activating a terrible Ragnarok. The girls immediately fire attacks at it, but they only make it stronger, and having no other choice, Lux asks Lisha to allow him to use Over Limit, so she immediately goes to get the disarming code. The Ragnarok throws several attacks at him with its tentacles, but he activates Reload on fire and maneuvers all the attacks while remembering all the hurtful words his brother said to him about how useless he is. He then activates End Action and cuts through all the tentacles at full speed, but the Ragnarok becomes even stronger and restrains him. While he struggles to free himself from the Ragnarok's grip, Thilfi begins to motivate him, and at the same time, Lisha sends him the disarming code needed for Overlimit, which, upon activating it, Bahamut becomes very powerful. He immediately charges at the Ragnarok, annihilating it in an instant. The next day, Thilfi is now feeling better, so she stays with Lux to take care of him due to the severe wounds he sustained from the fight. Lux soon fully recovers, and the Academy celebrates his return. Then the Headmaster tells him about the Foundation Festival coming up in the capital in a few days. Later that evening, all his crushes fight to have him as their date at the event. And when a debate continues, the lewd headmaster suggests that he selects three girls who worked hardest at the previous training camp and date them as a reward. The following day, while he and A re-walk across the city, she tells him that there will be an all-dragon battle during the festival, and he, along with the Mag Squadron, has been selected as representative from their country. She also warns him to keep a low profile as the Empire's assassin blade just escaped from prison, and he is not yet in the best condition to fight. For the remaining periods of that day, he meets his three dates, and when he returns at night, he sees Lisha, who is jealous that she wasn't chosen. She then makes a request, asking him to become her knight, as she will be addressing the nation on the last day of the festival and would like to introduce him as well. The next day, he meets his sister at the top of the tower to discuss the situation of his Bahamut. Avery tells him that due to his condition, he can only use Bahamut for 12 minutes, shocking him. A girl suddenly appears, and thinking she is the assassin they talked about, he immediately draws his sword, prepared to fight. However, she addresses him as master while introducing herself as Yuruka a former drag knight of the Emperor's family. Lux asks if she's here to ease Sekai him, but she tells him she has come to serve him, and he can hammer his sausage on her rice cakes. The idiot almost gets carried away by her plot, but Avery calls him back to his senses, and the pervert tells Yuruka to wait for him until he is ready. Later that day, while he takes his bath, Yuruka suddenly appears behind him for some shower plot, and as plot quickly develops, the other girls catch him again in such an awkward situation. At night, the cultured bastard meets her again and finds a sus place for another plot development. He asks her why she wants him to ride her like a stallion, and she tells him she has come to help him overthrow the new empire so he can rebuild the former empire, shocking him. However, he tells her he has no intention of doing that, so she tricks him into looking at the moon, and while he turns, she immediately attempts to attack him, but Celis suddenly appears and blocks her attack. Filthy, Lishup, and Crucifer also appear in their drag rides, and Yoruka immediately activates hers too. They launch attacks at her, but she manipulates their attacks using her drag ride's divine ability and redirects them. She assures Lux of her loyalty, telling him she will show him a precious secret as proof if he will come along with her, and then she disappears. Hayes and his team continue their plan to overthrow the new empire, and Yoruka works together with him to make this happen. Following that, Lux and his sister are called to the Imperial Palace for a meeting with the four great nobles, and they are informed about the ongoing plan of the former empire's survivors to revive their empire, which will be carried out right after the All-Dragon battle. They want Lux to serve as a decoy to lure all the Hunter Abyss out, so they can destroy them, but A re-initially objects to it due to her brother's condition. However, he decides to do it. On their way back from the Imperial Palace, A re worries about Lux as he can only use Bahamut for 12 minutes, but he tells her that someone has to do it anyway. However, he assures her he will find a way to do it even in his current condition. On getting back to the Academy, he meets Lisha to help him with his wyvern, and while he discusses with her, he senses Yoruka spying on him, so he immediately goes to search for her. On meeting her, he asks her why she is doing this, and she tells him it's a contract she made for her dead brother who was brutally isekai She then asks Lux if he is ready to join her, but he tells her he can't agree to her will, so she tells him he is now her enemy, 
At the turn of the next day, after Lux wins his fight, he immediately heads out to carry out his mission. Meanwhile, as Lisha battles against her opponent during the tournament, she suddenly loses control over her drag ride, which is manipulated against her will to fire at the audience. She is therefore arrested and taken into custody. Lux reaches the hideout of the Abyss and is welcomed by Sania, who suddenly fires several attacks at him, but he manages to dodge them all. She then summons a large number of Abyss, who immediately start to pursue him. He lures them to the New Empire's camp, and on reaching there, the army fires at them and destroys them. That night, Lux thinks about the whole event and wonders where Sandia went after he lured the Abyss away. Then he realizes that they had fallen for the enemy's trap, and suddenly, he hears an attack on their camp. He immediately heads outside and shockingly discovers that it's the rebel army led by Velvet. He immediately mounts his drag ride and begins battling against the rebel army. Velvet tells him that a much bigger calamity more powerful than Ragnarok is approaching the new empire. Then suddenly, Lux hears a quaking sound and sees a monster coming from afar called the Giant Warrior, the Fifth Ruin. Having no other choice, he decides to unsheathe his black sword device and immediately starts to flee from Velvet. After a while, he turns around and engages him in a heated battle exchange. Velvet suddenly lands a strike on him, damaging his drag ride, and just when he thinks he's defeated Lux, he shockingly realizes that the drag ride isn't Bahamut. Lux then activates the real Bahamut, shocking Velvet, who wonders how there are two Bahamuts. However, Lux explains that the other was a wyvern wearing Bahamut's armor. Apparently, this was what he was discussing with Lisha after he returned from the Imperial Palace. Realizing he has been deceived, Velvet gets angry and charges at him, but Lux instantly destroys him. He calls Aerie, and she tells him about the situation with Lisha. Meanwhile, Sania visits Lisha in prison, and while her men try to assault her, Lux suddenly busts into the prison, causing them to flee. Lisha starts to whine, but he encourages her and tells her to fight alongside him to protect the country, and she accepts. Crew Lucifer and Filthy try to face the giant warrior but couldn't deal much damage. Then Lisha suddenly appears and activates the Heavenly Voice Divine skill. However, the giant warrior resists it, making her embarrassed. Lux immediately grabs her hand and says he will strengthen their skills while they both unleash a combined attack together. Lux immediately activates Reload on fire while Lisha reactivates the Heavenly Voice, causing a devastating effect on the giant warrior. Seeing this, Hayes activates his powerful drag ride and unleashes a strike that splits the city in half. At the same time, the other night squadrons battle against the rebel army while Lisha faces Hayes. After a while, Hayes suddenly realizes that Lux is no more in sight. Meanwhile, Lux is heading for the fifth ruin, and while he looks for the entrance into it, Yoruka suddenly appears to resist him. Lux tells her he is going to save her, and after much talk on her brother's death, she suddenly launches an attack and they both engage in a series of exchanges. Lux unleashes an attack while revealing that he has been fighting to destroy the former empire so a better empire can be built, shocking her as she realizes that he was not an enemy all along. A shaking begins and Kurishi prepares to cause massive destruction on the new empire with the giant warrior. Just a few seconds left to the end of the new empire, and Hayes thinks he has succeeded. But Yoruka suddenly appears in the giant warrior and splits the core powering the ruin in two, thus disarming it. Upon realizing that he's been betrayed, Hayes gets angry and decides to destroy the Empire alone. He charges toward the Empire, and Lisha tries to resist him but fails. However, Lux suddenly appears behind him and activates Reload on fire before landing a brutal blow on him, annihilating him. Following that on the final night of the festival, while Lisha gives her speech before everyone, she introduces Lux as her personal knight, with whom she will rule the nation together to bring a new dispensation. She gives a long, boring speech no one cares about, but the people still applaud her anyway. After her speech, while Lux talks with her, he suddenly sees his brother from afar, and he promises Lisha to work for the country and the academy. The other girls soon arrived, and they lived happily ever after. This is the end of the recap. Will his brother be a threat to him in the future? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, then comment Dragon. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell. See you on the next one.